starts off somewhat easy. There's some crazy questions. Uh, I plan on doing a couple of these. Maybe one dedicated Cedar Point since I'm a Cedar Point fanboy. So uh, let's, uh, let's get things started here. I think I'm slightly delayed. It's going to take a little bit of time with the questions. Um, uh, gives me a little time to talk about it. Um, obviously, hopefully you know what you, Cedar Point is celebrating this year. Hopefully they open and we can all celebrate together. Uh, pretty big anniversary. So got a lot of people in here. 35 answers, 36. Rock Ceratops, what's up, Brian? I try to throw some easy questions in here too. Uh, that is right. 150th. 125th. That was that was a little bit ago. 125th is when they built the giant, obnoxious, ugly screen in front of the uh, train station um, that they later removed for the uh, for the summer spectacular. So uh, glad to see that removed for the 150th. Let's see what's next. What is the name of the wooden coaster that used to operate Cypress Gardens? Now, fun fact, uh, this ride used to be in uh, Panama City. They moved it to Cypress Garden. It was there for a couple of years before getting... Um, their, GCI was actually going to rebuild a, a version of it, I believe, back in Panama City just a few years ago, and that never happened. Um, I rode it once, uh, closing day of Cypress Gardens. It was, it was an okay ride, nothing, nothing too great. Um, but the answer is... Dun, dun, dun. Starline. Uh, yes, Starliner. I think Blue Streak at Cedar Point. You know, nothing, nothing too, nothing too crazy there. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty simple ride. Let's see. What company sells RMCs in Europe? Little trick, little trick question here. I guess Fred Grubb uh, likes to sit in Idaho. Doesn't like to travel to uh, to Europe, so he has someone else sell the RMCs. For him in Europe. Let's see here, and the answer is dun dun dun. Vacoma is right. We love our ride entertainment friends. They're they're great people. A, a great follow on uh, on social media. Usually have great memes. Vacoma doesn't have that kind of content, but they do sell RMC. So. Something to keep in mind there. I'm doing, I'm doing good. Uh, thanks for asking New England Coaster Club. Yeah, Vacoma really. And I, I'll, I'll use the other question, that, my fun fact there um, for a different day. But how many wood coasters did SNS build in the United States? No, SNS started building uh, wooden coasters when CCI, when uh, Belly Up Bankrupt, um, forget it, Den uh, Denise Din, I believe was her name. Um, she uh, got hired on by SNS, and for a couple of years, they built some coasters, and they're actually a really good ride. I kind of gave it away by saying it was plural, but four, four wooden coasters. They're, like I said, pretty decent rides. Uh, not not the best, but uh, these questions are brutal. Yeah, I sorry, they're they're going to get a little. Uh, they're going to probably get a little harder before they get easier. I'll try to throw in some uh, some good, uh, maybe some little easier ones next time. It was actually harder to make this than I than I thought. What GCI was the first to use the Millennium Flyer trains? These came out, I believe, at the end of the '90s. If that helps you at all. And I almost gave it away. Um, hopefully. Uh, one of these rides doesn't use Millennium Flyer trains at all. Like, that could have been another question. Uh, you're doing, there's a couple other Cedar Point uh, questions, Coaster Goth, so, uh, so you, might, you might, luck out, uh, might luck out there. And, uh, some other fun facts here. But Roar West, yes. Roar East needs uh, Millennium Flyer trains. That's right, Brian. Hello, represent SFDK. What Morgan Hyper Coaster is the tallest? It is also, here's a hint. Uh, uh, if you watch the video I did on this ride, that's kind of a hint in itself. Um, it is my favorite Morgan Hyper. I almost listed Steel Ely here as one of the answers, 
um, as a curveball, and I figured, but I figured everyone was going to uh, just go crazy and say that's not really a hyper coaster. Uh, I think there is a universal question somewhere in here. Uh, chat, what's up, Muldoon? Hey, how's it going? Superman, yes, Superman, the ultimate at uh, Six Flags Mexico. Actually, it's in my top ten, top fifteen coasters. It's a really, really, really good ride. Not not your typical Morgan. It has a lot more airtime. Reminds me more of Magnum than than anything else. Coaster bro, you're a little late here, buddy. Uh, what ride currently runs a PTC train from the Voyage? Now you might remember for a while there, Voyage was trying to run Timberliner trains, and in the process of trying to run Timberliner trains, the park actually sold one of the PTC trains uh, to another park. Uh, a little preemptive, because then they needed to order a new PTC train um, when they decided not to run the Timber Liners. So a certain park ended up with that coast. That would be Predator at Darien Lake. Not that great of a ride. But it still has the Voyage paint scheme on it. So when you, when you go and you ride uh, Predator, it has like the blue cars, the yellow stripe, all, all that stuff. I am drinking basic, uh, basic Coors Light at the in-laws' house is what they had. Um, what Six Flags Park does the company Six Flags Inc., you know, the one on the New York Stock Exchange is SIX, which one do they not fully own? There's actually three parks. Six Flags does not fully own. The, the corporation Six Flags does not fully own. They operate them, obviously. They have the Six Flags name. Um, but one of them is listed here. They actually have a contract that they have to add a new attraction every so often as part of the agreement. And it is my new home park, Six Flags Over Georgia. Mexico, they do own fully. 99% sure on that. Uh, but Six Flags Over Georgia... Six Flags St. Louis and Six Flags Over Texas are um, owned by a bunch of companies. Six Flags is a I think, majority owner, but it's a lot of companies and uh, part of the family from the original founder of Six Flags. Wolverine Wildcat, shout out to my, uh, uh, my, my fellow Michiganders. I'm from Michigan originally. Wolverine Wildcat. Pains me to say that this ride is nowhere near as good as the ride it, uh, it has, shares a similar layout to, which is a shame because if it did, Man, having that right next to Shivering Timbers would be crazy awesome. Let's see here. The answer is... Phoenix. Yes, there it is. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It like has the exact kind of same layout. And it is... Yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, in the chat that it is... One of the worst rides I've been on too, which is a shame because, like I said, very similar to Phoenix, which is by far one of the best. Brian, your controller is broken. Stop coming with the excuses. Why are you not doing well? Brian, and Brian, you and I just rode that ride too. Uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain was featured in the show Entourage. Great, great, great HBO show. I mean, for saying I'm not doing anything, go watch Entourage. Goliath was featured in there as what? Ride. I think they actually go to Magic Mountain a couple times. It would be Aquaman the Ride. SoCal Express? I, I'm glad I fooled a couple of people. I, I came up with like the first three and I had no idea what to put for the fourth. You're right, Joshua Hall. Entourage is fantastic. Great, great show. Movie. Movie was, but the show was uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, what state is Intimidator at Carowinds located? So Carowinds famously split between two states. Fury crosses the state line. This one's a pretty. I, I like to think a little bit easier. So everyone who's been complaining that it's been a little too hard, this one's for you. A little bit easier here, hopefully. Uh, what area is this located? It would be South Carolina. I like people saying North Carolina in the chat. Uh, or are you trying to fool people? I like that. Ruthless. That might get you a free coat. I don't know. We had to order, I think, like at least like 50 or 60 posters. So uh, we'll, we'll do trivia a few times, maybe. Uh, 
This is for uh, Drew. Uh, he specifically asked uh, for uh, Uncle Bernie's uh, uh, question here. I believe this is where he took his son on his very first roller coaster, so I'm sure it holds a very special heart, a spot in his heart. Uncle Bernie's, if you don't know, we have videos up on the YouTube channel. Uh, it is quite the play. It is quite, quite, quite the place. Go check it out. Uh, it is... Most FECs are a little weird, right? Um, you're in Dayton, you're in uh, Hoover Heights. I'm like literally like two or three miles down. I am in Dayton uh, uh, by what, Trot, Trotwood, I think. I think it's the area. So right down 70, right by the area, right by the day. That's where I currently But yes, it's in Florida. Not surprised. Strange place. I believe it's uh, just outside uh, Fort Lauderdale. So here's one. That's right, Joe. Go Flyers. Go Dayton Flyers. Sorry you couldn't have the tournament this year, buddy. That would have been fun. Um, we all know Malhorn Bob says is the first aero steel tubular coaster. What was their second? Not surprised. It's a mine coaster. Like, that's all aero built for the first, like, 10, 15 years, right? Uh, but which mine coaster was it? And if you could pronounce C correctly, this was like a live interactive, uh, you know, if you could talk, I might give you a free coaster just for that because I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm co sure Coaster Bro does because I, I, Coaster Bro, you probably worked that ride, but no idea how to pronounce that. But yes, Runaway Mine Train at Six Flags Over Texas, which is actually a really cool uh, mine coaster, mine train if you haven't been on it. Uh, it has like a couple dark ride seats. So mini joke, Nagashima Spotland is Cedar Point of Bees. I'm telling you, it is so, they, they copy Cedar Point quite a bit. But it features exact, one of the coasters there is an exact clone of a coaster from which part? Dude, I love that ride. You're talking about the one at, uh, over Texas? Yeah, it's great. Like the dark ride, the mine coaster actually goes through a dark ride segment of a saloon. It's really, really cool. SeaWorld Orlando, there is a Manta clone at Nagashima Spotlight. It even has like the splashdown in it. Manta clone. Great part, but yes, they, they very much copy uh, Cedar Point. They'll probably celebrate 150th anniversary next year, and everyone will be like, wait, but it's not your 150th. They'll be like, oh, we don't know. Um, so I used to live in uh, Orlando. And one of the best parts about living in Orlando, actually, living in Orlando was, let me tell you, up until recently, there was no airtime. Uh, Mako was the first coaster with a lot of airtime. Uh, well, my, I guess the C GCI um, gravity group had it, but most of the time, we were blessed with tons of uh, BNM. How many were there? A lot of BNM, not a lot of airtime. Ah, uh, yes, Brian and I had to go to Nagashima Spotline twice. Thanks for reminding me about that, Brian. I had to drag you back. But there was nine. Three at Universal, three at SeaWorld, three at Bush Gardens. But yes, the story was, first day uh, Brian and I went to Nagashima Spotline, Steel Dragon was closed for a win, and we had to go back and ride it again. Most expensive credit I, I ever had to do was spend $50 to go ride the damn thing again. Dragon Mountain. Uh, I think Legend asked for, uh, for a marine land question here. This is located just outside Niagara Falls. Uh, when you ride the SNS Tower, you can hit a beautiful shot of Niagara Falls. It's maybe a mile down the road uh, from Niagara Falls. Yes, Acrobat is the name. Thank you for reminding me, Coaster Cock. Now, the funny thing about this is if you watch the original POV, from like world's greatest roller coaster thrills in 3D. That might be coming up in the following question. A lot of this, the park ran out of money. So you literally went through the structure um, that was supposed to look like a volcano and then one was supposed to be like Niagara Falls and they didn't end up finishing those structures until maybe 10, 15 years ago. Uh, so here we go. I told you. World's greatest roller coaster thrills in 3D. Fantastic, fantastic VHS tape. I still have it somewhere. My goal would be to ride all. Those uh, all the rides on there at some point, but what one of these rides from around the world was featured on this VHS tape? Almost told you what year the VHS tape came out, but that might have gave one of them away. 
Dragon Con is right. Still haven't been there. Really want to go there. I think Florida Adventure would be a, a great place to go. Uh, like I said, I, I think Olymp Olympia Looping Bond was on there. Some random corkscrew poster from Sydney, Australia was on there because that, that was probably, oh, they wanted to get a coaster from every continent or something. Uh, so, what European theme park was the first Universal Studios park in Europe? And now you're going, there's no Universal Studios park in Europe. There's not any more, but there was one that was once a Universal Studios park. And here's a fun fact. Before it was a Universal Studios park, Anheuser-Busch actually owned uh, a sizable chunk of it as well. So, kind of was a bush park, kind of was a Universal park. Now it's kind of a nothing park, but still looks pretty good. I haven't been. You knew the last question. You probably knew this one. Port Aventura. For a couple of years, it was uh, Universal Studios, a Port Aventura, Universal Port Aventura, or something like that. And Sean's destroying everyone. I like this. Still got some good questions coming up. There are three wood Mobius coasters in the world. Finally completed the trio this past year. What is that one? That's right, Coaster Bro. Sean is a machine. He's just killing everyone. You don't know the answer to that. You just start hitting something really fast. That might help get you a point. But out of all of these, Lightning Racer is a racing coaster, but not a Mobius strip. And out of the three Mobius strips, uh, Racer's probably the most fun. Uh, Montano Russo is the most grand. And Grand National is definitely the most fun. Neat ride, because it starts on like one side of the park, goes underneath, pops out on the other side. But Grand National is pretty rough. You know me as Hyde. I once had a ride named after me. Not really named after me, but one of these parks used to have a ride uh, that was uh, called Mr. Hyde's uh, Nasty Fall. I believe that. What was it located at? I think the ride got renamed to something else before it officially closed. Mr. Hyde, someone uh, behind the uh, what, thrills on film says Dr. Hyde. Uh, it could have been one of those. I just know it was Hyde something nasty falls at Geauga Lake. Like I said, I think when it became Six Flags Ohio, World's Adventure, whatever they decided to call it that day, uh, I think it changed names. So. So here's another one that, uh, similar to that horror question, we all know Leap the Dips is famously the oldest coaster in the world. It's standing but op operating. Hopefully it reopens this year. Hopefully. I haven't been on it. I'd love to go on it. Is it good? I don't know. Someone tell me if it's good or not. Um, so what is the current oldest operating coaster in the world? All these are somewhat right around the, the same. That, that is true. There is no, I, I, no operating coasters right now. Uh, I was thinking about that when I worded the, the question, uh, but I didn't know how to say it. I, can't, I, I was going to make some kind of joke in there, but as you see, the question is already worded really long, so I didn't know how to, uh, how to properly uh, uh, fit all that in, that joke in. But yes, I think Scenic Railway is only one or two years older, younger than at least this. So here's a, here's a fun one that I will admit I didn't know uh, about this until recently, until a couple of years ago. But you know the famous steeplechase ride at Coney Island, where you could ride the ride uh, kind of you know like the single rail kind of thing, uh, similar to the, the ride at Blackpool. Uh, it was actually purchased by a company, Move. I believe it even operated for a year or two. In what state? Florida. Wow, not a lot of people got that, which makes me feel better because I didn't know this one until, until like I said, a, a few years ago uh, when I think on Parkscope, a shout out to Joe and his Parkscope podcast, um, they were talking about this. It was at some place called like Pirates Adventure or something like that in uh, somewhere in Florida. It only lasted a year or two in like the 60s. So I had been on Olympia Looping. Uh, I was very lucky to ride that in London. I did not know this until I went to go on the ride, and it's like, wait a minute, 
the front of the car does not say Olympia Looping Bot. It had a different name. And uh, talking to some of my friends in the European Coaster Club, a great organization, I highly recommend you. They're like, yes, apparently there's some legality that the name Olympia Loopy um, can only be used when the rise on the European continent uh, or on Europe mainland property. So when it is in London, it is called Munich Loopy. I don't know. I don't know why they can use the name Olympia Loopy when it's in Austria, but not UK. I don't know. It's on your bucket list. Yes, uh, it is a. It is a great, uh, great ride. I highly recommend trying to go ride. Uh, the you know it's in London in the winter, Oktoberfest in the fall, and then usually at a park in the summer. I I think Cedar Fair should buy that ride and then put it at one of the Cedar Fair Park every summer for you know and rotate it around. I think that'd be really cool. Here's a fun question. Six Flags used to have an attraction in Orlando. The building is still there. The building was actually used by SeaWorld Marketing for a while. I think now it's owned by the sheriff's office. Um, but it's right there along I-4, right by 528. And these are all names of stuff there, but it was called Stars Hall of Fame. I believe it was some kind of like wax museum uh, attraction. Uh, I believe it only operated very, very briefly, and it was in like the late 70s, early 80s or something. Uh, power plant on the list here was Baltimore. Movie Land was. Remember, American Adventure it was very out of Georgia. Uh, Six Flags Dubai. Uh, this is a park I really wish it happened. We have a construction update on the channel. When I went there last year, they were they're still building it. They're just dirt on the ground over uh, turned up. But it was going to have this really cool concept where they're going to have basically take the greatest hits from some of the major parks. And put those parts, you know, you'd go into the blink section, the blink section. And uh, so you, each one of these parks here would be represented with one of their main rides and kind of themed to it. Kind of like Epcot meets Six Flags. Surprisingly enough, the original over Texas, not featured in the plans for Dubai. But now none of it's featured in the plans for Dubai because Dubai is not happening. Maybe someday. I like that concept, though. So prior to forming Cedar Fair, I told you there'd be a couple of Cedar Point questions in here. Uh, I wanted to add more, but and then I started thinking, I'm going to do a Cedar Point dedicated trivia on its own, I think, because um, I'm a big Cedar Point fanboy. But they actually just recently sold this land. I believe just sold it uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, but they, they have plans to open a second Cedar Point. And I, I want to say it was just sold like last year or, or something. They finally sold the land. But in Michigan, surprisingly, not that far from where Cedar Point is now. Like it was going to be like an hour and a half drive. Like I think somewhere over by Ann Arbor or Lansing, Michigan. So probably an hour and a half, two hours from where the current, current park is. Would have been very strange. All right. Coming up next. This is a question I believe Drew asked for a, a lakeside. And we do have a POV of, I believe this, uh, the Charming Train ride on our, on our YouTube channel, or at least some video of it from a Legends trip. Or maybe he didn't get it, because you're, you're famously not allowed to film at this park. But Lakeside, beautiful Art Deco park. Not in great shape, though. Um, you ride the train around the lake. You pass a Mexican restaurant. And then you go, go literally right behind a... Or a Walmart. Like you are probably 10 feet maybe from the loading dock uh, of the Walmart. So uh, it, it's quite interesting. Uh, apparently, that's how that the person who owns the park makes money because no one goes to Lakeside. They sold all the land. I'm sure when you sell land to Walmart, that's a big old payday right there. Uh, according to TEA's attendance report, what is the most attended seasonal theme park in North America? Oh, we got uh, that guy from Saskatchewan join. Uh, what's up, our Canadian friend from the Great White North? Hope it's, uh, hope it's warm, warmer for you up there. Oh, Josh, forgot you're also our friend from the Great White North. Um, and how convenient we are talking about the Great White North because this is a Canada question. Canada's Wonderland attracts a ton of people every year, like millions more than Cedar Point, I believe. Um, it is by far, by far the most attended seasonal theme park in North America. I mean, 
believe it's done like six, six and a half million, which for a seasonal park is not that far away from what like some of the Orlando parks do at like eight or nine. I think Canada's Wonderland uh, for a while there was doing just as many people as like SeaWorld Orlando. Fantastic park. Shout out to Toronto. Josh, he has a lot of great videos on our YouTube channel of, of that park. Um, one of the most watched videos on the, in the YouTube channel is actually uh, a flat rides of Canada's Wonderland. So here's a bonus uh, ITL question. I was going to ask some more bonus ITL questions, uh, but this is the only one. Uh, original free RT a couple years was planned at. Uh, it never happened. It kind of was canceled about four or five weeks beforehand because the ride never opened. It was supposed to be a lightning rod at Dollywood open. But you, you, know, you know the story there. Who knows when free RT might happen again? Uh, maybe... Uh, who knows? Maybe the, if you think positive, maybe this year uh, parks will be desperate for a group of events and won't charge us as much. Because when we were at, asking parks earlier in the year, uh, they all wanted a lot of money. Uh, let's see. You are the, here's, a, here's a tricky question. But when I posted what parks uh, I should do questions about, someone actually mentioned, you need to do a question about this park. And I messaged him back and I said, you, sir. Read my mind because I just literally wrote this question. And this is a true thing. If you're flying into Detroit from the south, literally right when the pilot says, uh, we have began our descent into the Detroit Metropolitan Airport, if you look out to the right hand side, you'll be flying over to Cedar Point. Flight passes Cedar Point. But about five minutes later, about 60 miles up from Cedar Point, Babalo Island theme park used to exist. And um, now it's just this island between uh, Michigan and Canada. But there is still a giant SNS uh, observation tower uh, standing, you know, probably 200, 300. Don't know why they didn't, you know, they didn't do the space battle thing like Cedar Point and just knock it over there. Uh, so Pigeon Forge is home to the greatest dark ride of all time. Uh, you float in boats and it's themed to what? If you listen to In the Loop for uh, any number of years, you know uh, we joke that it's a great ride. It's a horrible ride, but at the same time, it is so good. So good, uh, so bad that it's it's good. Uh, it probably it probably is one of my favorite rides out there. Uh, but as much fun as it would be if it was themed to moonshine, it is themed to dinosaurs. It is a Jurassic Riverboat adventure. It always has a lot. If if you know, you know. It always has. A lot. Yes, it is well worth the money. It is a little expensive, but it is well worth the money. The oldest operating steel coaster in the U.S. is located in which park? And, it, you know, if you, obviously everyone knows Disneyland, everyone knows Conneaut Lake. Most people probably know Seabreeze. Memphis Kitty Park is actually a small, small, tiny, tiny, tiny little park uh, right by the Cleveland Airport. So if you're flying in to go ride steel, then you're flying in to go see, uh, go to Cedar Point. Probably about 10 minutes from the Cleveland Airport, Memphis Kitty Park exists. And that's not a hint of Sharing that credit horn because the answer is actually at Conneaut Lake, Memphis uh, Kitty Park's coaster. I believe would technically be the longest operating coaster, continuous operating, because I think it it's one year younger than the Conneaut Lake one. But obviously, Conneaut Lake has closed a couple times for a couple of years. So if you actually added up how many years it ran, Memphis Kitty Land probably would win there. Alabama Adventure. Is now run by X Holiday World folks. The company used to run the park. Uh, what, what company used to run the park? And I'll give you. It actually used to be called Vision. Uh, so it was like Visionland, then it was Alabama Adventure, and then Splash Adventure, and then Alabama Splash and Adventure. Yeah, they they changed the name a lot. But one of these companies used to uh, to run it. They did not own it. They only operate. That would be Cedar Fair. They operated from, I believe, like 2000, 2001 to 2006. Something like that. For like a five-year time frame. Is the year 2000? Might have been 20. Yeah, it was 2000, 2006. Uh, all right. Second to the last question. Six Flags is crazy. We know that. I know that. You know that. Your neighbor probably doesn't. But they would agree that this is crazy. At what point? Six Flags decided, to their credit, you're like, hey, our parks are only open eight months out of the year. How can we make money all year round? Uh, let's open up one of these. I think they might have opened up a few. I, I originally wore this as a chain of 
what, but couldn't confirm if they ever opened up more than one. But at one point, there was Six Flags Coaster Cups. Yeah. Yeah. Coaster Cups. I think that was a, a Shapiro era thing. How mad would you have been as a fanboy? You're a local Six Flags to get a roll here. Because they're spending money on opening up. Oh, that's it. And our last question for the night. I think we already know our winner here. Uh, what park did Six Flags over Texas sue about claiming a world record? Now, you know, we always joke as fans like, oh man, no, that comp- that park made up that world record or that park made up that world record. Well, back in the 90s, I believe it was, yes, mid 90s, uh, one of these uh, Six Flags actually sued park over saying, hey, you're incorrect about that world, that record. We own this record. And that it would have been Dorney Park. It was Texas Giant versus Hercules. I think it was a battle of like, you know, Hercules had the bigger drop, but six, uh, Texas Giant was taller. 